Termites. It's episode 77. Isn't that exciting? Fire! Yeah. So many things, termites. So many. First of all, you might be thinking, what is this bronze cow in front of you, Kathleen? Well, <laughs> that is a trophy. You don't really get trophies as adults anymore. And you know what? It's kind of fun to get one. And if you sell out the show in Durham at the nice. Carolina Theater, you receive um, a bull. Well, it was a bull. And then in TSA, they were like, why are you taking a cow with you? And I'm like, it's not a cow. It's a bull. But by the time I got it home, it's a bull because its horns fell off and its ear fell off. But I have them in my pocket. So it's a cow now. But I'm going to make it a bull with some Gorilla Glue. (laughs) And I'm putting it. Because the last time it broke too, and they're like, oh, we'll send you another one. But you know what? Maybe I'll leave it as a one-eared bull. And why the bull? Because of tobacco. There's a giant bull in downtown Durham. Yeah. A giant one. It's awesome looking. Um, bull something tobacco back in the day. They used to make Lucky Strikes there too. Right. Yeah, so my great uncle, uh, Mart, smoked. Loved wow. him. Lucky Strikes, yeah. Um, so the shows were super fun there. Both of them sold out. So smart. I love North Carolina. Like, I could live in North Carolina. Really? Yeah. The, and where Charlotte is so, it's so young and it's so fun. And then I Googled it. It has more millennials coming in than any other city in the United States. So... Prepare yourself, people my Whoa. age. The children are coming. <laughs> but it was, it's a, well, it was also 70 degrees unnaturally. It was absolutely gorgeous. And Raleigh, Durham, and the whole thing. And then um, I cruised through Duke's campus because I'd never seen it. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty, right? It's gorgeous. Yeah. I don't know what it costs there. Like, go there, like, what, a billion dollars? <laughs> they don't even yeah. tell us about that shit no. in the Midwest. You, I was told you're either going to University of Missouri or University of Kansas. And if you're super weird, uh, Illinois somewhere, which I did two and two in Illinois each. Um, yeah, but the Duke thing, I'm like, well, maybe I would have paid. I always tell Lewis, maybe I would have paid attention. And if I've uh, gone to a college that looked like something out of a fucking movie, yeah. my whole goal driving to SIUE was to not hit a deer. That's not very <laughs> inspirational. And on their brochure, like one time I did a gig at Princeton. I actually, I never do college comedy. I, d- I didn't like it because I thought the, the children were too judgmental right. back in the day. Right. Um, I don't know. It never fit for me. But I did do it at Princeton. Uh-huh. And the girl that was taking me on the tour initially, she was like, so Albert Einstein went here. And I was like, holy shit, right? Wow. But then she said Brooke Shields. I'm like, don't ever use those two people in the same <laughs> sentence. I'm sure Brooke Shields is very smart, but not as smart as Einstein. Wow. But their whole calling card was that Maya Angelou taught there, all this shit. Uh-huh. My brochure for SIU Edwardsville said ample parking. That's great. And home of asparagus. <laughs> that's, what? That's, what, that's what they got going on. It was fine. But anyway, um, so it was cool to see. And then I drive through the Duke campus, and all I think is Dr. Ken, my friend, the guy from The Hangover, he went here and became what? A doctor. So if you're going to, a real doctor. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you're going to listen to comedians for medical advice regarding vaccines or anything else, (laughs) pandemic y, um, I would recommend you check Dr. Ken's Twitter feed for all (laughs) free. Uh, opinions that are actually backed up with an education. Thank you. Um, and so that's my little trophy. The crowds were great. This is um, the beer I picked up there, Bull Durham beer. That's, that's what I'm drinking right here. Love the can. And then it says light, and it's brewed in Raleigh and in Durham. So a little local nice. pokal. Yep, some termites brought me beer and chips backstage. Those termites were Barbara, Martha, and Carrie. Yes, I got all that. Nice. Yes, I brought some home. May have given a couple bags of this stuff to my friend Ray and his wife, Jerry. They're lovely. They're lovely uh-huh. people. And they were hanging out backstage and stuff. And Kelly McFarlane, <laughs> my friend Kelly McFarlane, opened the shows and did uh, just killed it. And Because they were so great in Durham. And then I was like, you know, it's always weird if the Friday night is great bananas and then maybe Saturday won't be as good. They were just as good, if not even better, in Charlotte. Sure. Yeah, it just was like, is there any more cities in North Carolina that were like <laughs> a comedy show? I will drive to you. I will come to you. But anyway, great weekend. Thank you to those termites. We'll set that down. Did you get your barbecue? <clears throat> I did get my barbecue twice. Wow. Yes, me and Kelly and Eric. Well, I went to Max Speed Shop, and this is where I, I brought, I lugged this home. The vinegar-based... Nice. 
Um, and the other one I went to the Q Shack, which is in Durham. Durham. Yes, which was also delicious. They they just kill it with the barbecue. But really, it's just the sauce I'm after. The barbecue <laughs> tastes the same. It's barbecue pork. I mean, it's going to taste the same everywhere. But the sauce, I lugged home a few of these, actually. Yeah, you know, if Delta ever actually looked in my bag, <laughs> they, they would think I was an alcoholic with a vinegar problem. Because I lugged home beers, I got barbecue sauce. But, I mean, I'm shocked nobody's ever stolen stuff out of my bag. They always steal the goddamn lock. They have a fetish for locks, the TSA locks. Either they take it off and then just don't bother to put it back on, or they're actively stealing them. They're like eight bucks. I will just give them. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pain in the arse. Anyway. I saw you went to an Irish pub. I did. I went to, in Durham, I went with some of the kids who work at the theater. Uh It's always fun to drink. Well, some of them were not super young, but others were like 21 or whatever. We, uh, they told me to go to a place called James Joyce Irish Pub, and then they were there, and we all drank together. And it's, well, because it was an early show, it's very, a very, I hardly ever have time to go out with the children. I like to go out with the children, but some, you know, half the time we're not done until 1030, and then I got to get going. And, but it was an early show, and I was like, hey, why not? The pub was right down the road. Easy breezy. It was a great pub, too. If you're ever in Durham, may I recommend that? James Joyce nice. Irish pub. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I lugged these back, too. Carolina kettle cooked dill pickle chips. I don't know. I haven't tasted them. Sometimes when they go dill, I don't know. Um, they're really good. It's called... <laughs> The Mama Gin Dill Pickle. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. I like it. Where are these made? Raleigh. Or distributed by Raleigh. Yeah, because they didn't go crazy on the um the dill. No preservatives. Gluten-free. Oh, I can send them to my sister. Kosher, sir. Oh, they're kosher. Oh, I can send them to Judy Cole. No trans fat. <laughs> no MSG. Nut-free. Well, aren't they just nailing it with the most healthy potato chip ever on earth? Now, I'm going to taste this on behalf because I'm doing the work of the Lord here. This is another one of the Dean's Sports Bar dips. Uh Yeah, I mean, the Super Bowl's over. We'll talk about that in a second. I don't even want to talk about it. Um, This is supposed to be Nashville hot chicken flavored. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. I love hot chicken. I love hot chicken, but... No. No. <laughs> no. It's okay. It is a dip. It's okay. Yeah. I wouldn't. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's okay. Well, the longer it stays in your mouth, the more I like it. Have some beer with it. No, I like it. it beer it's spicy. I vote yes. Okay. Yes. I vote yes. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all I got. I did get this from a termite. Um,. This is this made me laugh. This is from Mary Beth. Look, it's a it's a crystal baby shoe. Oh wow! I know it's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Like I don't even know where you'd find that, but I'm like, and look at the little box. It's like a little tiny, perfect. That's from Mary Beth, um, who saw me in Reading. And then there's bookmark things. I never heard of a book thong. I get it. It's supposed to be a joke, I think, but it really is a it's a book thong. Get it? Yeah. Yeah. It's very pretty, whatever those jewels are. Jewels. I don't know what they are. All right, I should have opened this beforehand. I should really get my shit together better before I come up here. Well, you're sad. Well, yesterday was ta- very d- tough if you're from the city of St. Louis. That's from Mary Beth. Yeah. Book thong, draw your own conclusion, just joking. Um, she likes podcasts. So thank you, Mary Beth. I love my little baby shoe. And Paddles, you got one too. You got a book thong. Oh, great. Which means you'll have to actually start reading. Won't that be something? Oh, please. What does that mean? What's the last book you read? Oh, my God. Right now I'm reading The History of the Masters. The History of the Masters. Yeah. All right. Caddies specifically. Caddies? Uh Okay. That counts. Um, (laughs) Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Once again, evil prevails. (laughs) I don't know why karma... People always say, oh, karma will catch up to people. We'll fucking win in this lifetime. You know, well, what if it happens in their next lifetime? Well, I don't care about that because I'm not here to hear it. see it. 
Stan Kroenke is carrying so much bad karma, and yet he won. Uh, he's the owner. And, it, you know, that's nice for some people. Like Cooper Cup, he's awesome. I don't think Matthew Stafford would be what he is without Cooper Cup. It's sort of like uh, DeAndre Hopkins with Kyler Murray. Yeah. And then DeAndre goes to his nine night and now Kyler's just running around in circles with no one to throw a ball to in some sort of panic. Um, eat all the Bengals. <laughs> they did a good job. Just one enough. I didn't feel like either either team ever got in a rhythm. No. Uh-uh. Halftime show was great. Um, I could have used a little. Nobody's ever going to top Prince when it actually started raining. That's like God did his lighting and sound. I mean, God did it. Come on. True. Mother Nature was like, I don't think you're quite fabulous enough. Play Purple Rain and I'll make it rain. Won't that be something? Um, I could have used a little more Mary J. Blige, but it's like they all only got to sing one song. I also thought maybe Queen Latifah because she was with those guys at that time. That would have been a fun another person thing. Um but the game, I, I didn't win a square. Lewis won a square in some pool thing. Uh, I just, I, I can't, I can't accept it. No. I can't watch Sports Center for at least a week now. It needs to change back to golf or March, March Madness. Yeah. As soon as that all starts, then this will go away. And sure. you got two weeks. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have to find <laughs> something to do. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, we, I, what I am watching, Inventing Anna. Guess who's playing Anna Delvey or Anna Sorokin, whatever you want to call her. Ruthie from Ozark. Nice, nice. She's so good. And you forget it's Ruthie so quickly because she does this crazy accent. But the lady in real life does the crazy accent. Like sometimes she sounds British. Sometimes she sounds German then a little bit of Russian and then American. It is so good. I watched two episodes after the Super Bowl and I would have watched a ton more except I'd gotten up at five in the morning. So I was too tired to keep going. But it is great. And the last... Uh, episode of Ozark, by the way, is a holy shit. Oh my God. Holy shit. You got to see it. Um, so I'm going to shout out both of those shows. I don't think I've watched, I haven't really had time to watch anything else aside from those. 1883 with Tim McGraw of Faith Hill. Only two people ever sent to hair and makeup to be uglier. Um, yeah. Um, everybody's commenting the blonde girl that I can't I can't do the voiceover with that girl because it's such a fake Southern accent. But I guess I didn't notice it, but in the last episode, it, this Indian guy falls in love with her kind of. She falls in love with this Indian guy, but he keeps calling her hair of lightning or something because she has <laughs> blonde hair, right? Yellow hair. But yellow hair, lightning. Oh, the horse is lightning. Yeah. Now I really sound like an old person. I don't know. <laughs> lightning, people, horses. Um I guess if you freeze-framed the show, and it's all over Twitter, like three times when the girl turns around on the horse, the back of her head, you can see the extensions taped in her head. <laughs> and I don't really know. And you can see her roots, so she's blonde, but yeah, nobody much. had hair dye on the prairie. No. no. There's just, that show st it's so, has so many good elements, and then they just throw in, it's time for an Indian to, sh to kill that girl. That's what I want to happen. Oh. Yeah. Then we lose our narrator. Great. Great. Yeah. It's also cheating. I don't like voiceovers because I feel like instead of acting it out, you just say it and get to jump to the next thing. So I say uh, that's what I'm in favor of. All right, termites. That's that was a little negative, but the Super Bowl really got me down. Cincinnati will forget. Since yeah, and I only know one Cincinnati Bengal fan from my whole life. I mean, friend Ross, and he was so excited. Sorry, Ross. Um, and the L.A. fans, like, I, when I was in L.A., I went to Raiders games. The Raiders were there. And then they left again. And then the Rams went to St. Louis. After I left St. Louis, the Rams went to St. Louis. So then I went back to St. Louis following the Rams. And now they're back out there. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> here's, here's who's having a bad morning, though. I'll tell you. I mean, compare, I'm not having a bad morning. I'm sad about that. But. Well, what about Tommy? Well, wait a second. Mattress Mac lost nine point five million. He bet the game straight up. He did. I won money. I should at least be happy about that. I bet on the Bengals, and you got four and a half points. They covered the spread. I bet on Stafford to throw an interception. Boom, hundred paid a hundred on DraftKings. I bet on uh, Mixon to run more than fifty-six yards. He did. I did lose the 
the Jamar Chase didn't score a touchdown. I bet yeah. on her on that. But <clears throat> anyway, he should have taken the points. I'm going to tell you what he did. Oh, that's awesome. $9.5 million in bets on the Bengals on the money line to upset the Rams. Yeah. Now, when he when he bet on the um, – he got greedy, and he swung for the big payout that would have potentially netted $16 million. If he had followed his last year's successful strategy – he would have won because Cincinnati covered the four-point spreads, only right. coming up three points short of L.A. That's not even the worst part. Since the start of 2022, four of his last five, five bets have been graded by sportsbook as lo- losing wagers. Oh, wow. Yeah, he bet on Alabama, and then they lost to Georgia, blah, blah, blah. But what does he care? He's a bazillionaire. He likes to gamble. Who cares, right? Good for you, Good for you. as Rocky Laporte would say. Good for you. Um uh, Tommy, Tommy, Salami. Tommy, I think, is retiring for sure. I think Janelle, Giselle's had enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's enough of this playtown now. You're going to get over here and act like a real husband. Because um, then there's rumors. Well, maybe he'll go to San Francisco. No, 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 that's going the wrong way. Giselle is South America. She's from South America. She wants, they bought a $17 million piece of land next to Jervanka in Miami. Not right next to him, but in that area where Ivanka and all the super rich people. I think Giselle is way more international than like, oh, maybe Tom Brady will play for the Indianapolis Colts. I okay. bet you don't even know where Indianapolis is. No. <laughs> Carson Wentz is leaving. Carson Wentz is on its way out of Indy. Yeah. And I don't even know as a Colts fan how you would feel about that. Some days he's great. Some days, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I never know whether to bet on them in the pools or not either. They're trick- they, there's a lot of trickery there. Um, all right. Let's get started here. I know. I'm half with it. This is the greatest news involving... I don't have any news about any um, anybody except Dolly. Yes. She is busy. Dolly is so busy. I didn't really understand those T-Mobile commercials, and I I didn't understand most of the commercials. After it was over, I'd be like, "Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that. I don't know what I was supposed to get." And I have T-Mobile because I'm I'm just that ghetto. But look at all the money they spent on the ad, and I use Coinbase where they put that weird ad up. I didn't even understand the ad, and and I'm a Coinbase person. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Dolly Parton is given free college tuition for if you go work at Dollywood. I know, it makes me want to go. Maybe I can go be an archaeologist. <laughs> I mean, right? If I go work at, I would like to work at Dollywood. Why not? Full free ride for college. That's for great. all staff. Part time, full time. <sighs> She's trying to get 500 employees. 100% of the tuition and the cost of books for any employee who chooses per- to pursue further education. So when all these companies out there are whining, we just can't get anybody to work here. We don't have any staff. Right. Step it up. Right. Yes. The benefit goes to, to, to Dollywood's 11,000 full and part-time and seasonal workers of any age at their 25 attractions in the United States, including the Harlem Globetrotters and New Jersey's Adventure Aquarium, starting on the day they're hired. When our hosts strive to grow themselves, it makes our businesses and community truly a better place. Yes. Mm-hmm. What is it? High tides rise all boats? Something like that. That's a saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. I t- yes. How about everybody? She's going to single-handedly make Tennessee way smarter than it, it than it is yeah, currently. Right now. Well, I don't know where they rank in education, but she's going to move that needle. Um, they aim to encourage employees to follow their dreams. We care about our host development. We want to grow their future because of love, not loans. Exactly. Love, not loans. 33rd in education. Mm-hmm. Who's last? Alabama. <laughs> Poor Alabama. I have friends who live there. They're not they're not uneducated. I don't Kentucky's know. Kentucky's at thirty six. Kentucky's <laughs> at thirty six. Wow. Um uh, Yeah. So uh, you know what? If you want to go to college and you want to go get a job, I can't imagine it's that expensive to live in Gatlinburg. It's a beautiful part of the country. You're right up by the Smoky Mountains. Um, so good for her. That's the kind of stuff we're talking about. Move the needle. Let's make everybody smarter. You know, maybe the smart people won't be doing meth in those weird cabins. How about that? Number one is New Jersey. Number one is New Jersey. Mm -hmm. 
I used to think it was Iowa. What happened to that? I was, not? At, I was at 18. I was at 18? Yep. Where's Missouri? Do I want to know? Nope. What is it? 30th. 30th? Yep. <laughs> you guys get dumber. Oh. 26 in pre K. And then 30th after high school. Oh, wow. Good for New Jersey. Look at New Jersey bringing it. Yeah. I also know they have super duper great um, autism programs in New Jersey yeah. um, compared to other places, too. Because one of my friends has an autistic kid, and the programs there are outstanding. Alaska's that's just. 49th. That's not really. Oh, Alaska's 49th? Yeah. What about up there? Yeah. Too cold to go to school. Alaska, come on. Yeah, I wouldn't leave the house. I've been up there in the winter. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Update! Yeah. The St. Louis couple with the guns, oh. the Hamburglar, uh-huh. with the mustard stain. Yep. Mm, mustard they've been put on probation to keep their law licenses. I love it. I love it. They should have gotten more than this, but whatever. The Missouri Supreme Court on Tuesday suspended the law license of two St. Louis lawyers who pointed guns at police brutality protesters but pause the suspensions if they complete a year of probation as part of their probation mark and patricia hamburglar mcclowski will have to file a series of reports and perform a hundred hours of pro bono legal service they yeah they should go find the people that were protesting and go to any of you have any legal issues because the hamburglar and his wife and her would be happy to do it for nothing (laughs) totally they're sorry they scared you with guns um They must also not violate any other rules of professional conduct. The punishment is less than the state's chief disciplinary counsel had sought. Alan Pratzel had asked the court for an indefinite suspension without the right to apply to have the suspension lifted for six months. Reached at the law firm, he and his wife, the Hamburglar, told the radio (laughs) station he was disappointed, and they may ask the U.S. Supreme Court to review the case. Oh, stop it. By the time he gets there, it'll be over. So grandiose. He's running around Missouri right now, her and him, getting money from the gun people and the who people and a lot of people because he's running for Senate to try to fill the state, the state that's being vacated by Roy Blunt. Yeah. But really, he's not going to win. He'll just get all the money and then run away with that. So beware. if you give him money, beware. My prediction is um, that'll be spent. Yeah. Maybe they can get some new clothes. Maybe she can go to Talbot's and get a new top. Yeah. It's hard to get mustard out. Go and maybe he needs some pants that fit. In this picture, when they came out of their house, these pants fit about ten years ago. Yeah, he has no pants. Yeah, maybe they could get some pants. Um. <laughs> so that's it. They're um, suspended. We'll see if they behave. Oh, wow. Yeah, they will because he's running for senate. <sighs> I do like though that there's a little trouble coming down the way. Update. Oh my god. Grand Prairie. What's in Grand Prairie? The missing cobra. Well, the owner of a venomous cobra. It's still missing. And here's the thing. It's winter now. So it's probably hibernating somewhere in a snake hole, like snakes do. Because they're saying, well, you know, we have, it's been, nobody spotted it. Maybe it's dead. Maybe it's in a snake hole. Yeah. Maybe the spring will meet it again. The owner of a venomous cobra that went missing in Grand Prairie is now facing charges. 23-year-old Lawrence Mattel was taken into custody without incident. He's accused of violating the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's release from captivity code, which is a Class A misdemeanor. When asked about the timing, Grand Prairie police said it came after the result of their investigation. Oh my God. Yeah. They also consulted with the Dallas County District Attorney's Office, Texas, Texas Parks and Wildlife Police issued a warning in August after his uh, West African banded cobra escaped from its unlocked enclosure. Ah. I mean, at least he told people. Yeah. You could just not say nothing. Right. But can they prove you owned it? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even know where you buy this shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Andrew does. Yeah. There are exotic <laughs> animal auctions. I am aware of that because my friend Andrew has purchased a strange turkey at one um (laughs) he said this guy said matt said he was in the process of constructing an in-home enclosure for the female enclosure when the mishap happened if we would have just locked had a lock on the cage there wasn't a lock 
and it could have been simply handled. The police said he did have a Parks and Wildlife permit for the snake. Well, maybe that's how they would know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People in the area were warned not to approach it. Calling <laughs> extremely dangerous. <laughs> Who would? Right. Who would approach a, a banded cobra? The missing cobra was never located. They said there's no new updates on the cobra's location, whether it was still alive after the winter months, winter weather and months on the loose. They added that he wasn't surprised the cobra hadn't been found yet because of the lack of resources put into finding it. Right, nobody's looking for it. Right. Oh, man. Here's what my fear would be. Okay. Let's say you have a garage in Grand Prairie, Texas, and you have a cement floor. In the summertime when it gets really hot, because the rattlesnakes do this up in uh, north of L.A., they like the cool of the cement. Yeah. So you're going to go out in your garage, and there's going to be Mr. C- Mrs. Cobra. Mrs. Cobra. Yeah. It's a class A misdemeanor. The people charged with felonies don't have 10,000 bonds. Um, wow. oh, this, the, 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 the amount of the $10,000 bond may have been impacted by Matt's previous assault charge and six misdemeanors as well as an overall interest in the case. Bonds are sometimes high. Because the case has national attention and bonds are low, and bonds are low sometimes, and people complain about it. Matt is currently being held in jail, the Grand Prairie Jail. His bond was set at ten thousand. Oh I'd make him go find it. <laughs> Why not? He said, "I don't think he's a bad person oh, per really? se. Like he doesn't <laughs> hurt people, but his yeah. little animal's going to hurt people. His little reptile. I'd let him out. Let him go find it, and I'd make somebody from Grand Prairie, Texas Parks and Wildlife." Follow him. Like, you can't just say, go look for it, and then don't prove to me you didn't. I got to know you did it. Right. I want him looking everywhere you can look. Where do you think it went? You, you, knew it. you knew it. If convicted of misdemeanor charge of allowing the snake, he could lose that license for five years. That should be gone forever, uh-huh. period, right now. Okay. Um, serve up to a year in jail. We don't need that. We need him to find the snake, dead or alive. <laughs> If you're update, a lot of termites sent me this one. It made me laugh. I'm like, God damn, yeah, because nobody did anything. That's why this is why the updates are good. Like, at least people are doing things. I'm like, can you just lose a cobra and nothing happens? Right. You'd kill him. Now, see, I would not put that man in the electric chair. No, I'd put him in a room with a snake and tie him up. <gasps> oh, God. With the cobra. Yeah. Update. <laughs> There's a lot of termites on my side. Uh, are there? There's yeah. a lot of termites on your death penalty side? Yeah. This man does not deserve freedom. <laughs> <laughs> this man needs to go find his goddamn snake is what he needs to do. And yeah. then his license needs to be taken away. And we're going to say, Matt, since you don't know how to put locks on cobra cages, you don't get to have cobras anymore. He can have black snakes. He can have all kinds of non-venomous, non-poisonous snakes if he wants. It would still make me freak out, but whatever. Mm-hmm. The Tinder Swindler. Have you guys watched it on Netflix? I think it was on Netflix, right? We, me and Kelly were talking about this weekend. <laughs> this weekend, like, the the one, if you haven't seen it, it's this guy on Tinder, and he, he cons these women into giving him shit tons of money, and his pictures are clearly fake, but women want to believe it. And, like, the first lady in the show, a little something off with that lady, like, she kept talking way too much about being a Disney princess, like, and, and she wanted a prince. And I always want to say to those women, guess what? There is no prince. You know who is available? Bob in accounting. He likes to bowl, and he's honest. What else do you want? That's what we got, Bob in accounting. This <laughs> prince bullshit. Anyway, so this guy went to jail. So you're not a believer. <laughs> no, there's no prince. Okay. Even the, the ones that exist aren't what you're told. Look at Prince Harry. Is he even still a prince? I don't know how that works. The whole family's got COVID now. Charles has got COVID. Camilla's got COVID. They think the queen's got it. They're going to be queen, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, Simone Levive, I'm probably saying that wrong, a.k.a. the Tinder swindler, is going to have a hard time finding new victims on dating apps because he's been booted from just about everywhere. A rep for Match Group, owners of, oh, my God, listen to all of these. I did not know this. These are dating sites. I've never heard of. Wow. Okay, a rep for Match.com. Owners of OkCupid, Hinge, Plenty of Fish, Our Time. Is that for the seniors? Yeah. (laughs) 
yeah. see the ads yeah. for that one. Cool I know, I could actually go on that one now. Hi. Oh, looking for long walks. I love to snuggle. Tranquility. <laughs> snuggle. Dental. Do you have dental insurance? Oh, Want somebody to go get another implant with you? <laughs> right here. <laughs> I love mayonnaise. Uh, uh, Paris and Match tells TMZ that Simon has been permanently banned from all of their project properties, leaving him out of options when it comes to scamming women. But see, I don't believe this. Let's just go, because then um, Kelly's husband, Eric, was talking about facial recognition, the technology, and I don't even understand how good or bad it is, but he thinks it's good enough. But I said, what if he, though... Just went and got a tiny nose job. Wouldn't that be enough to throw all that off? And he could come back. What if he just cut his ear off? That was a brain stopper, wasn't it? You didn't even know what to say to that. I don't even understand. If he wants to get back on, I would think. They said, Tinder spokesman told us Simon and his many aliases, aliases would no longer be allowed to open an account on their platform. As he violated their terms, use someone else's picture, yeah. and then don't meet them for a long time. Okay. Just keep getting money. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not encouraging this behavior. I think You're it's awesome. terrible. <laughs> but also, that lady, that first lady, was like, she got on an airplane with a stranger, a private jet. Yeah. What the fuck? You know, you don't do that. You no. could be being flown to your own murder. According to the new documentary. Uh, Simon would show off his lavish lifestyle of women on Tinder in hopes of getting their trust and affection. Once hooking them, he'd convince them to, quote, loan him money before he ghosted and made off with their cash. Much like a Ponzi scheme, the documentary claims he was using one woman's woman to impress the next and so on. All in all, he allegedly took in more than $10 million from his victims. He was eventually arrested in 2019, sent back to Israel, where he was, he was released just after five months of prison. What? Yeah, and he was back five on, months? he's back online. He's back on Instagram and everything else. But the dating sites, I guess, are saying, nay, nay. I think he'll find a way. If he's smart enough to do all this kind of manipulative bullshit, he'll figure out how to get back on. I don't think he's going to be on our time. See if that's really the old people one. Oh, yeah, it is. Is it? (laughs) Because they always go, over 50? Dating for the young at heart. Young at heart. Silver singles. Silver (laughs) singles. Oh, my God. (laughs) It's just like, that's a little too close to silver alerts. Yeah. yeah, me and my brother, <laughs> me and my brother were joking yeah. that every time my mom goes somewhere, there should be a silver alert. Yeah. Anytime she goes somewhere in a car, because oh, not because she's old, she's just never known where she was going. No. She gets lost super easily. I mean, she'd always just <laughs> the minute she leaves the house, <laughs> enter it. Silver alert. Oh. Update on another one of our traders. Oh, 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 oh I'm keeping up. I want to know what happened. A man who identified himself as a believer in the Q conspiracy theory was sentenced Wednesday to three years and eight months in prison for assaulting police officers at the Capitol during last year's riot. Well done, prosecutors. He called himself a patriot, but the judge who sentenced him said the rioters involved in the Capitol on January 6, 2021, don't deserve that description. The Patriots were the police officers who were defending the Capitol building and our democratic values, U.S. District Judge John Bates said, before handing down one of the longest prison sentences for the Capitol rioter so far. <laughs> the guy was 26 years old. Langerdan, I can't say his name. Um, he was a Q follower. and eh, we all know what that all is. Um, he didn't think it was going to get that violent. Moopsie. No. Uh, He assaulted the cops. He threw wood at them and audio speakers at cops. And later, here we go again. What does my dad say? I do not recall, and I need an attorney. Shut your goddamn mouth. Mm -hmm. He bragged about his actions on social media. Of course he did. I mean, people. They want him to see it. The defendant was not caught up in violence, the judge said. He sought it out. Things did not go how I expected, I mean, the guy said. Oh, there were people that had told me things were going to happen in a certain way, and they didn't happen. At that point, I began to realize that some of these people may not have been telling me the truth. Oh, no. He was living in Vermont in a trailer with no vehicle or TV. He began spending all of his time consuming information on the Internet about Q and the Proud Boys, Proud Boys, blah, blah, blah. And then his grandpa said, you know, I knew Q was pretty far out there, but I didn't, dis- didn't heartily try to dissuade him from listening to their arguments because he was getting involved in citizenry. No, no that's not getting involved in citizenry. Citizenry is, you know what? I think I'll run for, I think I'll go get a spot on the school board. 
Right. That's where you start. Right. You don't go, I you know I'm gonna go throw some speakers at a cop's head. <laughs> wow. At the Capitol, nonetheless. Wow. Then I'm gonna post it on the facial book. Yep. Everything I did this weekend. <laughs> God. America. Yeah, he could have had a sentence that was ranging from 46 to 57 months. The judge was not bound by these guidelines. Um, they're going to take off for some of the time that he's already been in jail. But there you go. You know, you want to do stupid shit like that? Four years this will be. But, I mean, he was in a trailer in Vermont. Probably got cold. At least it'd be warm in jail. Come on. No. For, for, no. for reals. No. That's a long ride down, too. I wonder how he got there. <laughs> Vermont's way up there. I never know where I'm at when I'm in the upper northeast like that. Like, I'll, I'm like, how did we get in New Hampshire? We were just in Vermont like seven minutes ago. How tiny are these states? Like, in the Midwest, it takes hours to get to another state. <laughs> Moving on to holy shit, they found it. Nice. This is so weird. I'm telling you, I'm going to work at Dollywood so I can be an archaeologist. I'm starting over. Is it too late? No, Probably not. Yeah, I know what. I think there's science involved. I, maybe I could get somebody to cheat for me on that part and I could do the rest. You got a good personality. They'll get you through. A high speed riff. <laughs> well, I don't even need to be like the smart person out there. I just would like to dig. Don't they just need diggers? Probably. I don't right. think you need a degree for that. <laughs> well, you, to get on these projects, yeah, because they're super serious. Right. These are serious people. Why don't you a high-speed rail intern. project. Go be an intern. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I could be an intern. Yeah, you can do it like on a Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> In where? Missouri, Tennessee. But that's, what am I going to find? Civil War shit? Wow. I want to find cool stuff. What does that mean? Roman stuff. Well, that would not be over here. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're halfway there. Here's a cool one. <laughs> a high-speed rail project led yeah. to the gruesome, dis gruesome discovery. Yeah. Of dozens of decapitated corpses just outside a major metropolis. United Kingdom archaeologists have announced the discovery of about 40 2,000-year-old decapitated corpses buried in an ancient Roman village unearthed during the construction of the HS2 project an hour northwest of London. So you're only one hour north of London, and there's 40 Roman decapitated skeletons right underneath the ground. In addition to the ruins of the village, artifacts, and ancient coins, they found the burial sites for more than 400 people, about 10% who'd been decapitated. They could have been outcasts or criminals, according to the authorities, but the nature of their beheadings was not fully clear. This is where people start making up stories and shit. They'll find something like that and go, well, you know, if it could have been a criminal in a ditch, or maybe, right. you, yeah. Some of their skulls have been placed at their feet, according to the researchers. Our interpretation of this burial practice is that it could be the burial of criminals or a type of outcast, although decapitation is well known elsewhere. It appears to have been a normal, albeit marginal, burial right during the late, late Roman period. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They, they found that hundreds of ancient coins, they found all kinds of shit in this Roman village. Over 50 archaeologists began excavating the site last year. Climate change activists have protested the rail project, demanding the government halt the construction. Last month, the London police evicted a group of them from a city park where they had to set it up in a camp. And bah, bah, bah. So I got another holy shit. They found it. Okay. This one's pretty cool, too. I don't know that it... I mean, skeletons are freaky enough. Yeah. But when they're decapitated and the skull's at their feet... Yeah. Uh, we can probably tell it was a bad one. But I also don't know if they're that bad of a criminal if anyone would take the time to do that. Why would you even care? Weird. See, the answers to these things, we'll see if they, we'll never know. But that's also okay. Holy shit, they found it. An ancient drum found in children's grave built most important piece of prehistoric art in a hundred years. Now there's a picture, and Paddles will put it in the show note. It wasn't played as a drum. It's just a piece of art. But it's pretty flipping cool looking. Okay. Yeah, it's a 5,000-year-old chalk drum will go on public display for the first time next week, more than six years after it was uncovered by archaeologists in England. The object was discovered along the burial of three children and has been billed the most important piece of prehistoric art to be found in Britain in the last 100 years in a press release. Okay. They will unveil it next week as part of the World of Stonehenge exhibition. 
first discovered by an independent company, Allen Archaeology. Well, look, there's a guy. I wonder if they're looking for help. Allen Archaeology. During a routine <laughs> excavation at the village of Burton Agnes in Yorkshire in 2015, the drum has been the subject of significant research and conservation work. Despite its name, the object is not a musical instrument, but rather a piece of sculptural art. you got to go look at it. It's weird. But see, they don't say where. Where is it? I can't get it. A British museum. That's not very specific. Well, I'm not going to be there anyway. But if there's any, um, you know, termites over there and you want to go see it, now you know. Nice. Now let's turn the page back to America. Here's what we're doing. While the British people just found a drum that's an awesome piece of art, we have an Alabama man accused of feeding meth to an attack squirrel. What did you just say? <laughs> this is why we're still America. I read all this smart shit. Here's what they're finding uh -huh. here. I found they may have found where Jesus walked on water. That's uh -huh. for next week. Oh my yeah. God. The, the UK archaeologists are just killing it. Here's what we're doing. I swear to God, this is the headline. I was supposed to do it last week, and I forgot. I don't know why I didn't bring the story up. Alabama man accused of feeding meth to, quote, attack squirrel. He had a squirrel, and he turned it into an attack squirrel. Oh. Now, if you're Lewis Black, you believe all squirrels are attack squirrels. Yeah, but this one is a super attack squirrel because <laughs> it's meth, though. It's a frontline guy. Mickey Joel Pollock, 39 years old, will now appear in court on February 28th. The Alabama man has denied allegations that he fed meth to an attack squirrel at his home, will <laughs> reportedly face additional charges delaying his trial. He was scheduled to appear in court next week to face charges of possession of a wild animal. Is it a crime to have a squirrel? I, it's probably better than me. Yeah, it's better than eating it. Yeah. And what if you raise it? I don't know. Uh, he, was charged, uh, he was also charged with stolen property and possession of a weapon by a felon after his initial arrest in June of 2019. The bizarre case started in 2019 when deputy raided his Athens, uh, Athens home and said they found meth, ammunition, and body armor. The paper reported that they also have claimed to have found the squirrel and released it into the wild. Oh, wow. Mm, I bet the other squirrels are like, what? They, Limestone County deputies, were said they were told that Polk fed the animal meth, but said there was no safe way to test the animal. Wow. What? So you're going to release, um, wow. this guy looks like a hardened criminal. Okay. Anytime we start with the neck tattoos, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Mm. He was not home during the raid. Ryan, Ronnie Reynolds, who was allegedly inside of the home at the time, was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and loitering at a known drug house. Polk was arrested following a manhunt. <laughs> I really want to know more about who told him he was feeding meth and what did it do to the squirrel? Right. Right. I mean, did it make it crazy? Wow. Did it attack people? Was it like a guard dog? Like yeah. he, he couldn't afford, you know... A, a Rottweiler, right. so he got a squirrel, squirrel. and get. Alabama. Well, squirrels can go ape shit. So let's say somebody comes in to steal your meth, uh, and you say, "Get them to your attack squirrel." That could really mess somebody up. I can't believe we are having this conversation. Well. You know, there's a lot of people in Alabama that can't believe this conversation's happening either, I'm sure, but it is. That's My friend, Terry, Terry Henley, are you listening? Probably not. <laughs> no, he's probably not listening. This is a great story. Okay. Sometimes when people protest too much, you just really go, what are you actually thinking and bring it to the table here? Because this is way about you, not about the subject. Hudson, Ohio, the mayor says ice fishing could lead to prostitution. What? I swear. What did you just say? <laughs> ice fishing could lead to prostitution. I think he's hoping it does. <laughs> I think he has probably been out in an ice, and I have all those jokes about ice fishing in my act. If you'd see my act lately, it's all true. And that lady got me a guy to take me and 
prom- said on the phone, Kathleen, I found a guy that don't take you, and I promise he's not a pervert. I'm like, what? What is going on out there? Blue Clam Dave. Blue Clam Dave was not a pervert. He was a wonderful person. Wonderful. He did forget to check the oxygen levels in the lake, though, and we didn't catch anything. Um, Hudson Mayor Craig Schubert is no stranger to controversy, and comments made at Tuesday night City Council meeting have once again landed him in the headlines. During a discussion regarding ice fishing safety, Schubert expressed concerns concerns regarding the practice. In particular, he stated his belief that ice fishing could create a slippery slope that ultimately leads to prostitution. Okay. Well. Uh, no, hold on, hold on. I think he was sitting out there hoping he had some chick, and he didn't. And then he fantasized about all this. And then that's where the slippery slope came into his brain because he already thought of it. Well, if you could think it, it can happen. Maybe just you, sir. If you open this up to ice fishing, well, on the surface, that sounds good. Then what happens next? Does somebody come back and say, I want an ice shanty in Hudson Springs Park for X amount of time? He thinks they're going to start renting out as little whorehouses, little, little whore huts. Yeah. And then if you allow ice fishing with shanting, that leads to another problem, prostitution. And now you have the police chief of the police department involved. Just some data points to consider. Oh, no, no, these are data points, sir. Let's go, let's go talk about what's really going on in your fantasy mind, Craig. Yeah. yeah. Um, Michael uh, Schubert's comments, which have gone viral on social media, initially elicited confusion in the room. I'm sure everybody was like, what? <laughs> we want to get out of here by nine, okay? Huh? What are you talking about, jackass? We're going to sit here and talk about it. We're going to have hoes in our ice fishing huts. <laughs> God. Plus, plus I, you, you couldn't afford that because any prostitute worth of salt would say, I ain't, I'm too cold. Yeah. You're going to have to. I'm charging triple. <laughs> um, I would. I'm too cold. And I have Renaud syndrome, so my, my, di- my fingers will go numb. I can't. No. If I have to take off my clothes. Um, uh, 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 he initially elicited, conf- elicited confusion in the room before council member Chris Banweg broke the silence by stating, that's what I'm not in, that's why I'm not in favor of shanties, which drew a bunch of laughs. Like everybody's like, this is crazy. Michael Whitaker has been fishing at the same spot in Hudson since he was a kid and was surprised to see a sign banning the activity when he recently went up. He wrote to the city council and finds himself just as baffled by the mayor's comments as anybody. We go out there to get away from women, he laughed. (laughs) Well, I get what he's saying, but I mean, there's no reason it should be this fun to catch a four-inch bluegill through an eight-inch hole, but it is. He's defending. He wants Uh to get away from his wife. But don't say get away from women. Come on, I want to go. I'm fun. Over the course of the past year, this guy's made all kinds of crazy-ass statements. Yeah. So, I, 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 I don't know. Ohio, Hudson, yeah, Ohio. Mayor, Ohio. Why did you elect this man as mayor? Yeah. Right? I get it. God. <laughs> Ice fishing. It's so, 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 so cold. It's if fun. people are having it's sex, so whether it's paid for or not, it, it can't be that enjoyable. It's too cold. No. I mean. No. I get it. <laughs> This fascinated me. Four story high row wave breaks the record off the coast of Vancouver Island. I'm obsessed with rogue waves. I have a whole book about my friend Jim McDonald, comedian, bought me a book for Christmas. I read that book too. Called Rogue. <laughs> um, because they really can't predict them, which means at the end of the day, as far as this dumb science lady is concerned, you really don't know exactly what's causing them. Or you would be able to predict you'd be able to predict it. True. But that's if you're monitoring the whole ocean, maybe not. It's that whole science thing. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A rogue wave measuring fifty eight feet, which isn't the tallest wave ever. I'm gonna tell you about the tallest wave ever. This one was recorded off the coast of Vancouver Island, breaking the record for proportionality at three times the size of surrounding waves. So they measure a rogue compared to all the ones around it. And only a few rogue waves in high sea states have been observed directly and nothing of this magnitude. The probability of this event occurring is one in 1,300 years. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. 
The wave made a splash in the scientific community for being proportionately the most extreme rogue wave ever recorded. Although it occurred in November of 2020, the study confirming it just released the results on February 2nd. This looks like a large four-store story lump sticking out of the water with a large peak and big troughs through it. In the past decade, which was once known as marine folklore, because people would say that. And then they draw pictures of it. Back in the day, the old fishermen and people yeah. would be like, that's bullshit, that can't yeah. possibly it's happen. True, right. Yeah, I get it. Um, in the past few decades, which was once known as marine folklore, has now been accepted as real by scientists. Rogue Rogues called extreme storm waves by scientists are those waves which are greater than twice the size of surrounding waves, are very unpredictable, and they also come unexpectedly from directions other than prevailing wind and waves. In a simplified terms, a rogue wave is just actually a wave that is large compared to the surrounding wave field. Overall size doesn't matter, but the comparison in the size to the waves does, blah, blah, blah. Recording these killer waves, see, they can't, they need they need to get footage of them. Yeah. That's what they need for people to really take it seriously. Well, well, eventually they will. We got cameras on everything, but so far, True. not really. Um, this is the largest wave ever, though, because I googled it. Because I'm like, well, I know I watched that thing on Delta, hundred foot wave in search of the hundred foot wave. The surfer people in Portugal, yeah. and they were getting up to like sixty plus feet. Um, the largest wave in history during the night of July 9th, nineteen fifty eight. The largest recorded wave in history occurred in Litua Bay, Alaska. Litua? Litua. Litua. It reached, it reached an astonishing height of 1,720 feet high. Oh, my God. Yep. As a frame of reference, wow. the Empire State Building is 1,250 feet tall. Are you kidding? Oh. Now, I saw a movie 100 years ago about a man and a boy in an old-timey fishing boat, like an actual John boat, that rode the top of it. And, to, and never died. They just kept stayed on the peak, and it kept going until it, it wow. was gone. The wave was caused by a massive earthquake underlong the Fairweather Fault, which runs along west of Juneau and the Alaska Panhandle. The earth, uh, earthquake was measured at not 7.9 on the Richter scale. Rock that was 3,000 feet above the Gilbert Inlet loosened and fell into the water. The estimated, of rock, estimated amount of rock was about blah, 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 blah. Yeah. When the impact occurred, it generated a tsunami that spread along the bay and even traveled over land that separated the Gilbert Inlet. You can, If you go online, you can see the inlet, how it went crazy. When the tsunami finally exited it into the Gulf of Alaska over the, uh, something, I don't know, the land had been scoured clean up to the height of 1,720 feet. Millions of trees were swept into the Gulf of Alaska. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damage was also noted in Juneau, the capital of Alaska. Three people died. Um, that's not many. Nope. Eyewitnesses accounts from other boaters who survived the tsunami reported that it was 100 feet high by the time it got to the mouth of the bay. That's crazy. Yep. This wasn't the first tsunami to hit the area. Four other large waves in 1853, 1874, 1899, and 1936 had been documented. But the 1958 slide removed any traces of these previous waves. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Somebody needs to remake that movie. I know I saw it as a kid. And it was just, it was crazy, but I don't know if I thought it was real back then. Um, how much are we willing to do for Jeff Bezos? Hmm? 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 Oh, People? Uh -huh. Not a lot. This kind of shit that he's doing, I just feel like you're you're pushing the gods, you're challenging the gods, which I would never nope. want to do. Historic. Dutch bridge to make way for super yacht reportedly built for Jeff Bezos. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Amsterdam, which I've never been to and I've always wanted oh, to go. That's wonderful. Lewis loves it too. Yeah, it's fun. The city of Rotterdam has agreed to remove a section of a historic bridge in the Netherlands to make way for a super yacht reportedly built for Amazon.com founder Jeff Bezos. Now, here's my question. Whoever built it, you put it behind that bridge. There's That's as dumb as me putting a key of furniture together in my family room in my one bedroom apartment, and I needed it at my bedroom, and then I couldn't fit it through but the door. That's their famous shipyard. It's just where it's located. But I understand. But if you build something that's too big to go through the bridge, you should have settled this a long time ago. Agreed. Just the way I should have built my IKEA fake closet in my bedroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It could be one of the all-time dumbest things I've done. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, "Fuck!" 
And it, it's too much work to take it all apart. Yeah, you just got to leave it there. Leave it. Yeah. Who cares? It's a shitty one-bedroom apartment. Right. I don't care. Enjoy. Yeah, do you enjoy my closet? Let's decorate it. <laughs> Uh, spokesman for the city of Rotterdam said the midsection section of the old century, I can't even name, I'll try, Koningshavenburg. We're going to go with that. <laughs> yeah, Koningshavenburg, known by locals as De Hef, will be removed this summer to make way for the yacht with a 131-foot-tall mast. The mast, oh, my God. They declined to say who owns the ship. We all know who owns the uh-huh. ship. Um. It's owned by Bezos. Uh, I I saw them interview people in Amsterdam. And they're like, what do you think about it? Because now all the people have decided that when he does pull out, they're all going to throw eggs at his boat, at his super yacht. Right. I mean, it, a bad, a raw eggs do fuck up paint, though. I wouldn't want somebody throwing eggs at a boat. Yeah. They fuck up house paint. That's why when kids would egg your house, mm-hmm. parents would get so mad because it's like, not like toilet paper when you get TP'd, you can just get rid of that. But this is, uh, I don't, somebody said, well, it'll create jobs. They're going to take it apart and no, then put lady. it to let him out. Uh-huh. Or don't put the mast up yet. Why does the mast have to be up? Because it's the width of it, too. Oh. It's so big. Uh, I, you know, when you're creating this shit this big, like how much is the gas for that? And is it necessary? I don't know. Like, I have things that are unnecessary, but they're not. This is crazy. You've built a yacht so big it won't go through a bridge. Like, yeah. I don't know. He pays no. Croning Shaven Bridge. Croning Shaven Bridge. Yeah. Good job. Speaking of snakes, I forgot to. What? Yeah. <laughs> We're not speaking of snakes. I was speaking of snakes, the cobra. I should have had this this story closer to that story, but I messed up. An Air Asia flight, I would have a heart attack, was discovered after passengers spotted a snake on the plane. Shut up. Oh. Guess where we're going back to to find this flight? My favorite topic, Kuala Lumpur. Oh God. City of what? <laughs> Departing Malaysian Flight 370. 370. Uh, they had to have their trip rerouted after spotting an uninvited passenger on the plane. A video shared on TikTok by user. No, I'm gonna. I didn't go look at this. It's at edol eight eight oh eight. We'll put it in the show notes. What appears to be a long snake can be slithering through an overhead light fixture. Come on. <sighs> in the caption, the user wrote that the flight, which was headed from the Malaysian capital city of Kuala Lumpur to Tawu had to instead make an emergency landing in Cushing, according to the translation of the text. Air Asia did not immediately respond. However, they said the incident was true. It's aware of the incident that occurred on the flight as the captain was notified the plane was diverted to be to be disinfected. Because then I think if there's one, there's more. Like, what if a ball of snakes got in? Yeah. Like, uh, God. they said the passengers weren't in danger. Well, yeah, I am, of having a heart attack right now. Yes, I'm in danger. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I would do. I guess I, I wouldn't be comfortable sitting down because then I'd think they're at my feet. Right. Standing up, maybe, but then I'd be thinking they're going to drop out of the light fixtures. Yeah. Go hide in the bathroom? What if it's in the toilet? <laughs> That's what they do. Well, he says they, they were able to continue their journey same day. Um. Still, travelers with upcoming flights have no need to worry about their vacations may turn into the real-life version of snakes on the plane. In a statement attained by CNA, Ling noted that what happened was not a common occurrence. It's a very rare incident that any aircraft, which can occur any aircraft from time to time. The video has been viewed more than two million times. Yeah, it's not the first time snakes found their way onto a passenger plane. In 2019, a woman traveling home from Scotland to Australia encountered a nasty surprise when she went to unpack and found a snake curled up in her luggage. Now I'm going to think that every week I'm going to open my big suitcase. Full of alcohol. Outside. <laughs> I'm full of alcohol and barbecue sauce. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here in the house. Ding, 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 ding. Who's a lucky person? Who got to go to North Carolina? Nothing broke. My whole bar made it home. Well, my bull broke. It's now a cow, which I prefer a cow. Anyway. A lot of beer. Um, now I'm going to have to open my luggage outside. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. There was even an occasion where a pilot had to conduct an emergency landing after finding a snake in the cockpit. 
I think they probably go up there because it's warm. If the engines are on. Yeah. It's like they get up in a car engine sometimes because of the heat. I don't know. That's awful. No. No. This is interesting. Okay. There's a 99-year-old, 90-year-old man. Um, he's a lawyer and a forensic pathologist. Okay. He says that the JFK assassination, uh, Lee Harvey Oswald lone gunman theory is bullshit. Listen to this. Oh boy. I've always thought it was kind of bullshit. Okay. I don't know who did it. It does amuse me, though, on airplanes when they say, if you bring your own alcohol, <laughs> this is a federal offense. I'm like, um, the feds can't figure out who killed Kennedy. <laughs> right. I don't think they're going to know if little Miss Comedian no. Lady happens to have <laughs> alcohol. Wow. Dr. Cyril Weck, Wecht. Distrust the U.S. government. He's proud of it. The forensic pathologist who declared in 1978 that Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone in assassinating President Kennedy is now 90 years old and still sticking to his story. I've been to Dealey Plaza. They used to have the assassination tour. It was a bus, and you got on this bus. It was crazy. It started at the school book depository, and then it took you down where he got shot. Then it took you where Oswald went. Like, the bus kept going to that neighborhood where he shot at cops. Then it went back to the uh, movie theater where he went. It was uh, fascinating, and it's it's gone. I guess I was the only nerd that was like, fuck yeah, I'll give you $15. Really? I'm Nobody getting on this. It was amazing, though. It was a great thing. Um, but when you were down in Daly Plaza, I know he was a sharpshooter and stuff, but mm -hmm. I just don't think, I think there was somebody else helping. Um but I don't have any actual proof of that. And I, well, you can't go down these rabbit holes, especially with the internet now. It's too crazy. You could be there all day and come up with 18 different theories, and then I'd come out and go, I think Shaka Khan did it. Right. What? <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Um, his latest book, the JFK, the JFK Assassination Dissected, summarized his six decks of research into the subject and pokes holes in the conclusions made by the seven-man Warren Commission commission that Oswald, without any help, shot and killed Kennedy when his motorcade drove past the Texas School Book Depository in Dallas, and blah, blah, blah. Young people are still being taught that the 35th president was murdered by a lone gunman, gunman, and that is simply bullshit. He boomed during an interview in his modest office in downtown Pittsburgh last month. Well, he's from Pittsburgh. I trust him even more. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Solid people. Oswald had Solid almost... People. I like Pits <laughs> Pittsburghians. I don't even know what you would call uh, had almost he'd almost been Oswald had almost certainly been a CIA agent of some kind. I do think that's probably true. Yeah. The trips to Russia, yeah. it's all very, it's a lot for that time. Suspect. But the directive to 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 kill may have come from higher up. Listen to this: Alan Dulles, director of the CIA from fifty three to sixty one, had overseen the disastrous Bay of Pig invasion to out Cuban dictator Fidel Castro, and had reason to be disgruntled. Dulles also ended up in a prime position to participate in a cover-up. Kennedy had fired Dulles because he was really pissed off about what the CIA was doing. Then guess who gets appointed to the Warren Commission? Dulles. It stinks to high heaven, this guy said. Uh -huh. okay. Tanned, vigorous, and dressed sharply in a black jacket and a red necktie. Weck okay. said he wrote his, boat not for, wrote his book now for the sake of truth and his advancing age. I don't intend to live forever, just for a very long time. I felt I wanted to lay out all the things I've experienced and done and the people I've met, and it was time. I've been working on the books for six years. Um, he's a former coroner of Allegheny County. Um, he's a trained lawyer and a doctor who's conducted more than 17,000 autopsies, and he's also proved expert testimony. He's provided expert testimony on high-profile uh, cases, including the death of Robert Kennedy, Martin Luther King, Elvis Presley, John Benet Ramsey, and Lacey Peterson. Um, uh, the, the first non- governmental forensic pathologist to gain access to the National Archives. Wow! To examine the assassination materials. What Weck discovered and exposed the ghastly fat... Oh, he's the one that exposed that the um, president's brain is gone. Like, they've lost oh. Kennedy's brain. Right. right. As we sit and talk today, the brain remains missing, unaccounted for. Interest in the assassination. Um, <laughs> it, I, I would actually... <clears throat> Read his book. Really? There might be something some something supporting more than one gunman, evidence evidence of witness manipulation or failure to call key witnesses. Um, he d doesn't think that all the relevant documents will be released, but predicts if they are, it could be um, 
we have a lot of revelations in it. I, I, I just don't think he did it alone. Um, I don't. I never believed the Warren Commission. I didn't either. No. 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 They're, I don't know why. I also think they probably just couldn't figure it out and went, fuck it, just say it happened. Sure. And get it over with. After a 10-month investigation, the Warren Commission concluded that Oswald fired three times. Also, those old guns, it took a while to shoot quickly. Yeah. It's not like now. Um, one hit him in the back of the head, one missed, and the third hit him in the head. Rather than explain the sequence of the hits, the commission presented three slightly different scenarios, but each scenario <laughs> ended with the conclusion that just one gunman killed the president. Um, he was the only one, this guy at the time, who said he was the lone dissenter. I really stood alone. For one, the gunshot wound in the back, but, but I can't, this is all gets scientific -y too hard, but check it out. I think I believe the guy. Yeah. I don't think we'll ever know. That's why I don't like to go down those internet holes, because I'm never going to know anyway, most likely, <laughs> right? You come to your own conclusion. This makes me laugh my ass off. And wait till you see the picture of this painting. How much is uh, 740 euros, 740,000 euros, like a million bucks? Yep. Is it a million? No, 800 like All right, we'll call it 850,000 for the sake of rounding up. Okay. There's a painting. It's a million Canadian dollars. A million Canadian dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Justin's in some trouble up there. And then I saw, and I saw a speech, and he's like, "Let's face it," and his hair looks wonderful. Mm -hmm. This whole pandemic has sucked. I'm like, did you just use that word? <laughs> like, what are you, 45? That's all you could come up with. This sucks. Yeah, Justin. Then he said it in French, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds way better. <laughs> he's They've blocked the Can the Detroit Bridge. The Canadian protesters. Here's the weird thing. 85% of the Canadian truckers have been fully vaccinated. So all of this is over 15% of the people. All of this craziness. And all I can think of when I watch it, this is how pathetic my mind is. I hope my friend Mary can still go over to her casino. Because that's the bridge Mary uses to get over to the Canadian side to gamble. And I'm like, if they are keeping Mary down... She already could not go for a couple years because of COVID. You need to let these ladies loose that are up there that want to go gamble. Um, so there's an eight hundred thousand dollar painting, eight hundred fifty, we'll call it. Right? Uh -huh. The uh -huh. artist is extremely famous. Uh, I've never heard of her, but I guess it's a big deal. Anna Leperskaya. Uh, sure, that's a name. It was on display at the Yeltsin Center in the Russian city of. Ederinberg. Okay. Now, the painting is called Three Figures, mm -hmm. and it's three faceless women. Okay. okay? We'll put this picture in this <laughs> show. Uh <-huh. laughs> A brand new security guard destroyed the painting after he got bored and drew eyes on the faceless figures depicted in the artwork. No. <laughs> With a ballpoint pen. <laughs> now, I have been very bored at many, many jobs, and I have done dumb shit. Oh, my God. But on his first day of the job, the security guard had drawn two pairs of eyes with a ballpoint pen onto <laughs> artist Anna Lepreskaya's three figures painting during an abstract art exhibition That's in so Western nice. Russian. The painting was defaced by a security guard who had not been named but is believed to be 60 years old who worked for a private security company. Whoa. I could actually see my dad thinking about something like that. Yeah. Oh, she's got my smiles on it. <laughs> oh, my God. So much better. This is so... <laughs> oh my God. You, I mean, and in Russia, you're going to get in so much trouble. The painting, which had been on loan from the State Gallery in Moscow, was damaged by the security guard. He became <laughs> bored. He's been since fired. The identity of the yeah. suspect has only been revealed now as a security guard by the uh, Yeltsin Center, though they did not share the name of the worker. The work was sent to the Moscow Gallery the next day, inspected by an art restorer. Oh Police have opened up an investigation for vandalism, which comes with a 395 euro and a fine. 
Oh, it says dine. That's a misprint. And a one-year correctional labor sentence. Oh, I don't want to do that in Russia. No. 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 <laughs> Here's your train ticket to Siberia. Here's your ballpoint pen. You have fun drawing some shit up there. Think about it. Oh, my God. It's being restored. <laughs> it's unclear how much it's worth, but they think it's, oh, well, yeah. It, the insurance company is 850000 the company where the security work guard worked is paying for the restoration. That's crazy. <laughs> the damage was done with wow. a ballpoint pen. Specifically. Yeah. Well, you know he had one in his pocket. And went, <laughs> How bored are you, though, that you're going to go, I'm going to go up there and <laughs> put some eyes. That. Maybe the eyebrows, you know. A little. Improve on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, goddamn, that lady forgot to put faces in there. <laughs> I'm going to put some eyeballs. She, maybe she got busy and couldn't finish it. I'll do. I'll help her out. Let me go finish this for her. Oh wow. <laughs> well, All right. sober, too. Crazy. This makes me happy. This makes me happy. Chimpanzees apply medicine to each other's wounds in a possible show of empathy. What? They do that. Most animals lick each other. Most animals do this, right. The the feral drug lord cats. This is a dumb conversation. Kato showed up with a hole in her neck, and they all fixed it. Mm-hmm. Went down with staff. They just kept licking their shit up. They keep it clean. Doesn't get infected. Cat was fine. Chimps have been seen applying medicine to each other for the first time ever. I'm excited for him. <laughs> for the first time ever, chimpanzees are spotted capturing insects and applying them to their wounds, okay. as well as the wounds of other. Others, possibly a form of medication. This behavior of one animal applying medication to the wounds of another has never been observed before, and it may be a sign of helpful tendencies in chimpanzees similar to empathy in humans, according to a new study. Well, I've seen it in cats. Right. All the time. Right. The cats are constantly, cl- and their ears, they clean out each other's ears. Gross. What, oh. they get mites and stuff. Yeah, but come on. Researchers witnessed multiple instances of this behavior within a community, a, a community of about 45 chimps at the... Longo National Park in Gabon as part of the Something Chimpanzee Project. <laughs> Bears, elephants, and even bees have been known to self-medicate medis, medicate against parasites, mites, yeah. and illnesses. Self-medication oh, wow. has been seen before. Our two closest living relatives, chimps and bonoboos, for instance, swallow leaves of plants and chew bitter leaves that have chemical properties to kill intestinal parasites. But this is the first recorded incident instance of animals applying other animal matter, the insects, to open wounds. Chimpanzees eat insects, but we did not know that they catch them and use them to treat their wounds. Hence, they are not only have an understanding of their food species, but also probably about characteristics of other animals that help act against in- injuries. That's just wonderful. Except, you know what? what? Whenever I think of chimps, I think of Travis, the one that ate that lady's friend. Yeah. Tore her face it's off. Crazy. Yeah. But Not good. Uh, you, you shouldn't give Travers Merlot and let him watch a Red Sox game, and that's what that lady was doing. <laughs> so you know what? Is the, is the chimp going to go crazy? Yes, yes. it's going to go crazy. All right, I'm going to do this one and then my quote. <laughs> Eight restaurant chains that are currently shrinking. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That one's Golden Corral. You think so? COVID-19 isn't done with the restaurant industry yet. Two years into the pandemic, many U.S. restaurant chains are continuing to struggle, faced with declining sales on one hand and rapidly changing consumers' behaviors. On the other, chains have avoided bankruptcy thus far, have done so at considerable expense, shedding dozens of restaurants and in some cases hundreds in order to stay afloat. Legacy brands of the 80s and 90s have been particularly hard hit in the past few years with once massive chains like Ruby Tuesday. I'm not going to tell you. So, number one, shrinking, Ruby Tuesday. I never loved it. No. No. That's where I went one time with my sister and her friend and her friend's kid. She had like three kids. Mm -hmm. One of them crawled into a booth and ate with old people. (laughs) Yeah, the boy. He climbed over and around, (laughs) and then we couldn't find him. Uh And he was just sitting with people like my parents' age having a hamburger. They both, yeah. Well, that's nice. I don't, I never did, even on the road, (laughs) even way back, way back on the road, Uh when you were in a town for a week, we would always end up at Fridays one way or another. Uh-huh. Fridays was good back in the day. Yeah. 
It's not so good anymore. I right. went not too long before COVID to one somewhere, and it was bad. Um, really like Applebee's, Jack yeah, they like their Jack Daniel sauce. Yeah. Um, Applebee's kind of. I like Applebee's, yeah. and they hijacked a lot of those people, I think. Yeah. Ruby Tuesday made it through the pandemic just barely. Like many other fast casual chains, decades past their time, they were pushed into bankruptcy. Um, the chain emerged from bankruptcy court, a ghost of its former self with the restaurant cut by more than half from 451 to 219, 209. I just haven't eaten at it. I only ate there once, and that was with my sister and her friend and the kids and all that. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't think anything of it, so I have no opinion on that one. Boston Market, I love their mashed potatoes. It's a good pot pie, too. They have a great pot pie. Pot pie. Yeah. But I don't go there often. I don't know why. On the road? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like it's Thanksgiving food. <laughs> like Every day. yeah like i know i'm gonna eat too much if i go there the mashed potatoes um that's their new slogan what what be. their new slogan thanks every, every, day, is thanksgiving. every day is thanksgiving boston market. <laughs> boston market has passed through the hands of no fewer than three different parent companies and watched its restaurant count steadily decline from a high of 1200 units to i don't know all time low of 326 Number three, as predicted by Paddles, Golden Corral. Yes. Now, it is nasty. a comedian friend of mine gets so mad when he sees Fox or the other. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, why is he doing this? He has enough money. He doesn't need to do this. I go, I'm going to bet you Jeff at one time really loved Golden Corral. Yeah, maybe, yeah, so maybe now. Yeah. Did, there was a giant Golden Corral fight on Twitter. It went viral. Yeah, it was like 30 people. It looked like a Western throwing chairs at each other because they ran out of steak. I can honestly say I've never eaten at a Golden Corral. And that's not because I'm not a snob. It's because I'm a snob or something. I mean, I love Red Lobster. I don't love a we didn't go to buffets. My parents never took us to buffets. I don't know why. But if we went out, I don't know. The buffet thing just didn't ever. It was probably too much bullshit. They didn't want us all jumping up and down and stuff. Um, Golden Corral. As recently as 2018, when many other buffet chains were showing a sign of decline, Golden Corral was still cracking, cracking the top 100 of restaurant business, top 500. Um, but even America's number one buffet couldn't beat the pandemics. In 2018, its uh, footprint has shrunk. Its footprint has shrunk by over 25 percent, with most of the losses in the last two years. Last month, the buffet reported a system-wide total of 360 restaurants, with 80 restaurants lost in the pandemic. It's still plotting a comeback what? Wow. with okay. plans for new lines of restaurants with a simplified, and wait for it, takeout friendly store design. I ain't taking out Golden Corral. No. Take out a buffet. Your mother know. would do that. Um, beloved Steakhouses, Ponderosa and Bonanza. We never went to those as kids. Here. Oh, Ponderosa was great. I never went oh, in. Stuff. They were acquired by Fat Brands in 2017 following several decades of ownership. Fat well, brands? Fat, F-A-T. It's a, like all caps. Like oh. it's a company. Fat Brands. Um, <laughs> yeah. About the uh, <laughs> they show. <laughs> wow. Number five makes me really sad. Steak and Shake. Really? I love Steak and Shake. I love Steak and Shake. They're chilly. Is one of the greatest. Their hamburgers, everything. Their French fries. It's slow. You don't ever get it in the drive-thru. You'll you'll want to murder people. But go in. The kids love it. The chocolate shakes are great. Uh, found it in, in the one by my house clothes. Made me so sad to get fucking put a Chipotle in there, and I hate it. Ugh, what a terrible trade-off. But you got a Whataburger. Yeah, there's a Whataburger close by, but I still prefer steak and shake. They're delicious. Steak and Shake is better. Steak and Shake is another decades old fast food brand. Started in 1934 with an uncertain future. Handed off from one parent company to another, Steak and Shake's experienced something of a resurgence in the late 2000s under the leadership of Sarda Biglari. Unfortunately, that momentum was short lived and began to peter out by 2016. In the years since, the company has uh, routinely made headlines with its erratic finances, announcing a fire sale of hundreds of restaurants in 2018 and narrowly avoiding bankruptcy in 2021. All the while, its store count has been steadily decreasing from as many as 423 restaurants in 2008 to just 306 in 2020. Number six, Quiznos. 
I used to love it. And when I would work in Dallas at the Improv, they put us up in the in this comedy condo behind the Improv, and right next to that was a strip mall that had Quiznos in it. And then my brother kept saying, it's going to get you one day, and you're going to have massive diarrhea for like a week. What? I know. And I was like, Specifically Quiznos. Yes. He was really anti-Quiznos. <laughs> and I said, Patrick, I've been eating it forever. I, maybe you just have your IBS problems or whatever. <laughs> I don't. I have a stomach of Irish steel. Right. But then it happened. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And then once you get that sick from something, who knows, though? It could have been anything I ate that day. Right. I was at a residence inn. I went down to the breakfast. Ooh, ha. That's what happened. Probably there. <laughs> Don't know. Gross. One of the biggest stores in declining quick service change, Quizno's store count has shrunk by 94% in the last 15 years. Oh, the sandwich chain peaked in, the side in 2006 with 5,000 units to its name. In the time since, its footprint has roughly halved every five years. It was down to 2,800 units in 2010, 671 in 2016, and 255. We're down to 255. Oh my God. It's hoping to find renewed sales through a partnership with Ghost Kitchen Company, Ghost Kitchen Brands, which in 2021 announced plans to bring Quizmos, Quiznos into 100 of its stores across the U.S. and Canada. Wow. Number seven, uh -huh. Fuddruckers. I went on the road with other comics. It's just, it's just like whatever was there. We were just you're so hungry, whatever. Right. Just wanted cheeseburger, or whatever. <laughs> Despite the liquidation of its parent company, Luby's, in 2020, a beloved burger chain, Fud Records is still hopping along. Acquired for 18 million by Black Titan Franchise Systems in late 2021, but Black Titan will have its work cut out to attempt to rehabilitate Fud Records. The brand has been in steady decline since 2010 when it acquired it was acquired by Luby's. Its store count has shrunk by half in the past decade, from 198 to just 92. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's a dumb name. Fuddruckers. I yeah, know. It's for children who want to say fuck every day. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, fuck rudders? Fuck rudders. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the only child that would want to do that. That's, that's not a normal thing where kids are like, how can I say fuck accidentally? Maybe. Um, <laughs> This is a travel tip before I do my quotes. Oh, Are you familiar with the gates of hell? Not directly. Not directly? <laughs> I'd like to throw Stan Kroenke in this hole if yeah, I could. Exactly. I've seen pictures of this before, but it's going to close. So if you want to go to the gates of hell. What are you talking about? If it's on your bucket list, this. <laughs> Let me tell, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this like I'm one of the NP. I'm going to read it like an M NPR person. Okay. Here's the problem with NPR. Um, stop with the guitar music in the background. Everything on everybody on NPR makes me want to go to sleep. Yeah. You don't need music that's you don't need, you know, crazy music. You don't need any music. But it's it's like the masters. Da, 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 da. Right. And then they read like this. It's always very quiet. If it's on your bucket list to visit the gates of hell, a fiery crater that's been burning on Turkmen Turkmenistan's Kakarum Desert since 1971, you'll have to move quick. Lee. Yeah, quickly. Quickly. Uh -huh. How do you move? I move quickly. All right. I'm going to go back to my real voice. <laughs> okay, thanks. The gates are closing. The fire is being extinguished and more than, after more than 50 years at Turkmenistan's president, Gerbangli. Oh, my God. This guy's last name. I'm going to try it. Bertie Muk Hamidov. I'm sure that's it. I like it. Say it quickly. Bertie Muk <laughs> has ordered the government to begin researching how to put the fire out. The crater came to light after a Soviet drilling rig accidentally punched into a massive underground natural gas cavern, which caused the ground to collapse and an entire drilling rig to fall in. What does it always say around your neighborhood? Uh, Sick holes are bad. No. <laughs> Think before you dig. dig. Yeah. Right. Even though they don't rhyme. A pocket of gases caused poisonous fumes. To fly around, it, it, it looks like the gates of hell because it's a hole. It's an enormous, enormous sinkhole that's permanently on fire. That's crazy. Yeah. The Soviets decided to send uh, the, like, the top of this got cut off. Decades later, the 230-feet hole is still burning and has been dubbed the gates of hell, attracting several um, thousand visitors every year. The children love to go. The children love it for the Instagram. They want to be in the picture. Nice. 
Um, Atlas Obscurica offers a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Turkmenistan, including a visit to the gates of hell to see the miraculous flaming pit in person, the only major travel company to offer a trip of its kind. The, fir the first departure sold out in less than 24 hours. As a whole, Turkmenistan only receives a few thousand visitors each year, but this relatively unknown country is a must-visit destination on the trip. Travelers can marvel at the impressive arch arch architectural structures and roam through the barren deserts and a world-class canyon. There will be the opportunity to visit underground lakes and relax in the seaside city of Turkmenbashi, named for the controversial former president before heading to the gates of hell for dinner and an overnight stay next to the crater. Wonderful. Yes. Oh, wow. The 10-day Turkmenistan and Gates of Hell trip has a capacity of 12 people. 12? Only 12. Making for an intimate group that will gain an abundance of knowledge from Atlas Obscura's <laughs> professional tour guides. Prices begin! 35 hundo. Departures are available from September through November. Wow. Okay. Now, don't say I didn't tell you. Sure. When you hear that this has been put out, and then you're going to go, well, God dang, I didn't know that. I would have went. Well, now you know. It's in all kinds of, I don't know. I've seen pictures of it all my whole life. Because it's called the Gates of Hell, and it does look like it. Okay. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. I'll learn something. Go, go giggle it. <laughs> Here's a couple quotes to sign off, termites. Yeah. Oh, the podcast shirts are back online. Uh -huh. If you want the black with the pink. Yeah. I have another one coming out for St. Patrick's Day. It's short sleeve. That's the last of the long sleeves, though. We're, that's the last order. So I did it because people were complaining um, that we ran out, which is a wonderful problem to have. This was said by Michael Altshuler. He's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. The bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. Wow. Right. Done, right. Right. I like it. But you're not really the pilot. Mother Nature, baby Jesus, because you don't know when you're going to die. You're just flying around till you die, but you don't know when you're going to hit it. Yeah. Right. You're on an active taxiway. Exactly. <laughs> Orson Welles, this was quoted in the Times of, U of the UK. Mm -hmm. If you want a happy ending, that depends, of course, on where you stop your story. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, termites, that's all the business that we have. Next shows, um, St. Louis, pretty much sold. I think that's sold out. Nope, um, a couple more. I think it's very close to sold out. I'm going to do a sports radio deal for that. To um, Charlottesville, Charlottesville Vir Virginia. Virginia Beach, yeah, um, Augusta, Georgia, yep. Augusta, and Atlanta, and... Portland and Seattle. D.C. D.C. Where am I going? Old Ebbets Grill. Love it. I love it there. New York City. Oh, yeah, New York City. See, all you New York City termites that say, how come I don't ever come there? I am. I'm going to town hall. Yep. It's right in the middle. Right. Um, be yeah, because sometimes, well, sometimes I go out to Long Island to the Huntington. That's a wonderful gig. Uh -huh. um, but it's fun to be in the city every now and again. I, and that's, um, there's many more dates, termites. They're on the website. That's all I really got for you, termites, this week. Be, um, we got to make it through February. It's still cold. Yeah. I keep looking for somewhere to go to golf, and it's just cold and shitty every, everywhere. Nowhere to even drive to. Back to Florida. <sighs> I don't know about that. South Carolina. Well, I'm doing Charleston. Yeah. So, Same. yeah, South Carolina. Yeah. Kiowa always calls. But that's because I love massive alligators. Right. The biggest alligators I've ever seen in my life are in, are in South Carolina. And There's one, and their barbecue's great. There was one. A lot of people don't know this: that alligators are um, they eat other alligators. So when you see like a big daddy, like a 13 foot long one at a pond, that means he's eaten all of his rivals, and it's his pond. Oh my god! And until somebody bigger comes and eats him, it's his pond. Yeah, there was a golf course called the Oak or the Oaks there, and uh, my God, yeah. And it's the only time I've ever been scared shitless because I walked over to a tree that was on the fairway. 
So I didn't think anything of it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't off in the marsh or anything. It was like, well, it was close to the edge, but not too close. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see him. He was just right behind the tree. He was like lined up, but I couldn't, it, and they, I, I used to do a, a hundred years ago, it's probably still exists. There's a, a show, a big old party thing called the Gator Growl in Florida. And I never thought about those words. I just went and did my shows at the Gator Growl. Mm -hmm. They actually growl. I went close to that ball and I heard, oh, no. and I went, fuck, fuck. Yeah. And I just started running around the golf course like a crazy person. Cause I, I've never heard him growl. So I thought it's gonna attack because right. it's mating season. They grow a lot. Ugh. Yeah, scared the shit out of Lewis, and he was like seven, seven, at least seventy yards away from me. Right. Where should I go? Where should I go? <laughs> I'm like nowhere. Wait for me to get in the cart, Lou. <laughs> All right, termites. That's it. Be helpful, termites. Be helpful, hamsters. Be worthy, termites. I hope you're a thirsty termite because there might be a show that there's just a t-shirt that says thirsty termite. Ah! Termite. Yeah. Okay. I've got to go do things today. So, oh, okay. not really. I got nothing going on. <laughs> I'm really going to go down and open this barbecue sauce, is what I'm going to do. What are you going to dump it on? I have meatballs from last week. Meatballs? Wow, that's disgusting. Plain meatballs. Great. No, this is perfect. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right, termites. That's it. <laughs>